Okay. Welcome to Bon Jovi Discussions Part 2. Today I have Danny from New Jersey. Danny, tell everybody about yourself. I'm Danny. I'm from New Jersey, as Jerry said. Uh, I've been a Bon Jovi fan since I was five. I became a Bon Jovi fan when I was in preschool, and uh, one of the teachers had It's My Life on. And um, ever since then, I've been a really big fan of the band. So tell them about your Count Basie story, theater story. So my Count Basie, so in uh, July of 2013, no, no, I'm sorry, December of 2013, I was in a really bad car accident and I had to have um, surgery in July. And I was actually having surgery the day after the Bon Jovi concert at the Count Basie. Uh, the John Bon Jovi and Kings of Suburbia show, the one in 2014. Uh, my dad got me tickets to that show. And honestly, like in the beginning, I didn't want to go because like with everything going on, like I wasn't going to go. But uh, my dad was like, you know, like we should go just like have like a good time, you know, just forget about everything. So I went and um, I bought a sign and he bought me like really bad like balcony seats. I was like when like one of the last rows in the back of the Count Basie and I had a sign that says, John, I'm a really big fan. Can I have a hug? That's what it said. And uh, one of the fans in the back with me saw it and he was like, you need to come with me. And I was like, and I was like, who are you? Where are you taking me? He's like, no, he's like, I know somebody that works here. And he took me downstairs, and uh, they actually put me in front row. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, I, like, told him, like, my situation, and they let me be front row uh, for, like, the last half hour of the show. Wow. I love front row. Um, and, uh, you know, like, Bobby, like, Bobby actually saw my sign. And um, at the end of the show, he came over and shook my hand and gave me a guitar pick that I actually held with me when they put me in for surgery the next day. Aw. Yeah, so. I think I remember, because we've been friends, what, since the Circle Tour? or Yeah. Yeah, around that time. So that's been almost, what, 10 years now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember when you had that accident in um, 2013. Yeah, that was, you know, Bon Jovi really helped me through that time in my life. You know, songs like Keep the Faith and uh, the radio saved my life tonight. Oh, let's, let's see that. I don't think it came into the screen. Oh, wow. I like that. Yeah, I got that, this tattoo after my first runaway in New York in um, 2016. Wow. Yeah, I got it um, the day that I came back, actually. <laughs> yeah? From the Runaway so, Tour. So that's your favorite song? Yeah. Yeah? I love that song. That's the song that I think should have made the Keep the Faith album. I agree. I, yeah. My take on that song is it's like John's like telling a story about how a song helped him through a really rough time. Yeah. And that's basically all Bon Jovi means to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... If I remember correctly, John wrote that song on piano, which is kind of unique. He yeah. Wrote, and you don't, you don't really hear much. Well, you, you hear a little bit of the keys in it, but you don't hear much piano in that song. So it's interesting. He wrote it on piano. And uh, that was for the Keep the Faith album. And uh, I love that album. So the only song that I would take out of that album would be... Um, fear i don't like fear you yeah. know i don't really like that song either yeah. so like I, I i feel like that radio saved my life tonight should have made the album just because it's so good and it's a fan favorite you know like a diehard fan favorite and i when they released the box set they kind of promoted the box set with that song and uh did you see the have a nice day tour that was my first tour yeah yeah did they uh play radio at your show I honestly don't remember. I was like five. So I honestly don't remember all the songs that they played. So one thing I remember is that they opened up with Last Man Standing from my uh, first concert. Yeah, and John's like in the middle of the crowd. 
Yes, and that's one of my favorite songs too. I, I like Last Man Standing. With Last Man Standing, though, I actually like the box set version better than the Have a Nice Day version. To me, it's the Have a Nice Day version all yeah. the way. I like the rock stuff. Yeah. So, see, I'm more of, like, I like the rock stuff, but, like, I'm more into, like, I don't know, Last Man Standing on the, the box set, it kind of had a more of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, not um, not rock and not ballad like in between i because i fell in love with that song when i watched it on the this how it feels right dvd so but the have a nice day version is okay too i guess but um so uh so the cruise yes uh the cruise thank god that wasn't this year <laughs> All, I, I was just saying that to uh, rachel <laughs> yesterday because at this time last year, we were, well, when was the cruise? It was like beginning of April? I it think. was the second week in April. Yeah, that yeah. would have been canceled. I know. That would have sucked, too. But oh. we, we we had a blast on the cruise. We really the, lucked out. Yeah, we did. But it was a blast, wasn't it? Yeah. And do you think he'll ever do another one? No, I think he's even, didn't he say that in, like, Brazil? I think a fan asked him that in uh, Brazil during a runaway uh, question. And he said that he would never do it again, which is sad. But, that but you know, sad. go ahead. That is sad, but I'm glad I got to experience the one of the two that he did. Oh, yeah. I'm gutted I didn't do the second one. But, you know, like you said, you know, I'm glad that we got to experience one of them at least. Because that was like the perfect Bon Jovi event, you know? That really was. Because you got to spend, what, three, four days on a cruise with other Bon Jovi fans, and you got to see two JBJ concerts, you got to see other bands, a cover band, and it was a lot of fun. It's probably my, my favorite uh, Bon Jovi event I've ever done. What was your favorite part of the cruise? Um, my favorite part of the cruise probably begin to meet john well besides that besides that's every that would be everyone. besides john shows so, which is the obvious yeah okay so besides meeting john and besides meeting our um i would say hanging out with my friends my bon jovi yeah. friends like you and many many others i think that was my favorite part because um i don't know it was, it was just special to be able to experience that with the other bon jovi friends be, because you know i don't know if here, I don't have many uh, Bon Jovi friends. You know Emily, obviously. That's it. Yeah. Shout and, out to Emily. Yeah, shout out <laughs> to Emily. And uh, so, you know, like my colleagues and my friends and, you know, even my fiance, they don't care to hear about my, my Bon Jovi experiences. or Yeah. Hear me too. But when you go on a cruise and stuff, you know, you guys, we all just sit there and talk and, you know. I know. We, do, we, we just hours. like... We just hung out till all hours of the morning. <laughs> sure. You know, we almost I, didn't sleep on that cruise at all. Do you remember the shut, what was it? What was it called? The dance and shut up or shut up and dance? Oh, uh, shut up and was the, it uh, shut up the, and dance? The, yeah, with, with the, the headphones. headphones. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> that was cool. I like doing that. That was a lot of fun. What uh, the buffet? The food was so good. You know, actually, I wasn't crazy about the buffet. Really? Oh, my god! I like the Irish pub better. Yeah, I cheated on my uh, diet so much that week. I had, like, 20 hamburgers, I think. <laughs> uh, and the ice cream, the vanilla ice cream cones, because it was so hot. And so I ate a lot of the, the ice cream cones. But uh, I'm trying to think what else on the cruise. One I of know my favorite parts of the trip was actually when John came on the first day. When they were dropping him off, I liked how all the fans united to welcome and show their love for oh, John. Yeah. yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, it was. I, I like. Did you watch him get on and get off both both days? I watched him get on and I watched him get off the last one, the last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to, I got to watch him get off both nights. I, I camped out <laughs> both days, which was probably crazy, but. How um, was that? Camping out? Let's see. The first day, um, I got front row center. 
and um, it was really, I think, what, what was it? It was like 90 degrees out. Yeah. We're like, we're like right down on the sun. And I camped out from seven in the morning up until the show at seven o'clock at night. Wow. And then the second night, I camped out even early, 6 a.m. up until eight o'clock that night. It was nuts. But so were you it. allowed to leave your spot at all? Well, see, some uh, some other Bon Jovi friends and I, we all camped out there. And so, like, we would guard each other's spot. And so, okay. like, if we had to go use the restroom or if we had to... Get I think I left my spot maybe twice both days just to kind of get something to eat. Or, and we'd also bring each other something to eat and stuff. It was crazy, but it was worth it, you know? Yeah. I, I loved being front row and stuff. And I thought you camped out the second day, didn't you? On a, no... Yeah, I really can't do that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 hard. It really is. But yeah, it was worth it, I guess. You know, I, I kind of missed that. I missed um, Matt and Obi's discussion. Did you go to that? I I was at the discussion. I missed David Bergman's event. I think that's because the day that that was happening was the day that I was performing with the Kings of Suburbia. Oh, really? So, like, oh, I think I was getting ready for that. So I missed you, Bergman's thing. Do you want to talk about that? You're um, singing on the stage with KOS? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, um, like, how it all started and, and all that. So I found out the karaoke contest. I, uh, my mom recorded me singing a video of In These Arms. And I submitted it, and I didn't hear anything for, like, a long time. And I had just assumed that, like, I didn't get picked for it. Well, like, a week before the cruise, I got an email saying that I got selected to sing with the Kings of Suburbia. And I was actually at work. I was working at Target at the time. And I had to stop myself from screaming through the whole store <laughs> that I was being it, that I got selected to do that. That was uh, a really big honor to get to be on the stage with uh, the people that... Uh, that back JBJ and you know like yeah. these are the people out of all the musicians that he meets and stuff like that ones that he picks to support him outside of Bon Jovi exactly and they're amazing did you get to rehearse with them or anything like during the cruise or anything or how was it I just did on not they, I did not um, I went to the meet and greet and that was the only time I was able to talk to them about it. Wow. I was at the meet and greet, and I just asked them, I was like, what if I mess up? <laughs> and they're like, we, they're like, we got you. You know, like, we're here to, you know, we're here for backup. Yeah, and, well, well, I thought you did good. I, I, I actually took a video of you, and I sent you that, right? The yes, video you did. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm trying to remember what song, don't tell me. Uh, it was... I know it wasn't bad medicine. Mm -hmm. I give up. I give up. In these arms. In these arms. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. I was, yeah, I'm trying to remember the other songs that were well, played. While I was performing, I was on such a high that it's really a lot of it is a blur. <laughs> but I just remember you and Emily in the front row rocking out. And yeah. I remember Emily was crying. Yeah, we and, were so happy for you. Yeah. It was yeah. really uh, an experience I'll never, ever forget. Yeah. No one deserved that more than you did. You, Thank you. Yeah. And it's something fun. And, you know, I'm glad you got to experience that. Yeah. And, you know, the people, the Kings of Suburbia, they're all such nice people. You know, the oh, friends yeah. of Carl, you know, Arna, you know, they're all such great people. They are. And they're great musicians. Great musicians. And yeah. uh, let's talk. I, I, oh, I wish ahead. that. Oh, sorry. I wish that John would perform with them more in, like, public oh, yeah. events. Oh, yeah. That's why I was kind of hoping, like, the last two years, I was kind of hoping for another Christmas show or or something with them. But they, they've been doing, like, a lot of private events, you know, where they get booked by private companies. Yeah. But, the only public event that I really know of was the one at the Count Basie back in 2014. I think that wasn't that the last one, or was I think there was one in 2015. Yeah. 
Oh, that this house is not for sale in 16. Yes, but that wasn't that was in the suburbia. Name. That was yeah. on Adobe. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I was just thinking in general when uh, the last time he was there. But yeah, you're right. I think it was 2014. Um, let's talk about the cruise shows, though, with uh, yeah. the JBJ and KOS. Uh, the acoustic show. What songs were you happy to see? I was happy to see um, I Will Drive You Home. Um, I was happy to see Joey because that's one of my favorite songs. I love that song. I wish he played it more. Um, and I was happy to see, um, what's that other, Color Me In. Color I me love in. that song. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The two songs that I were hoping to see was I Will Drive You Home and uh, Color Me In, which I think both of those songs should have made the, the album. The album. It, they should have made the album. Technically, they were released on the, the wasn't it the Target version? I think. I think so. I know. I, I, oh, I know. I think it was the Target. But I was yeah. hoping for both one of those songs, and I, I kept saying to everyone, I'll be happy if I get one of those. And then we, we got both of them, which was great. We also got Hallelujah, which he hasn't performed oh. in years. I know. That one was great. Because I think, did he close with that one? Yes. Yeah, he closed with it, and I thought that was, he's he's sang so good. And we got like always acoustic for like the first verse and chorus. Mm -hmm. Well, the audience sang the chorus, but that was so cool that he yes. sang. Because I think someone in the wasn't there like a Q and A, and someone said something about how he wrote always, mm -hmm. which you obviously know was for a movie called Romeo's Bleeding mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Which I never seen that movie. Have you? Me neither. And, it never made the movie because I think John pulled it out and then he put it, you know, in the storage somewhere and then they dug it out. Best decision it. he ever made. What's that? Oh, yeah. Best decision he ever made was releasing that. Yeah, that was, wasn't that the, I think that's their best selling uh, single. Yes. Selling wise. Oh. But I remember when he, he started singing that in the beginning. That was, that was really cool. Um, and then. The uh, KOS or the Rock Show the next night. What'd you think of that one? Uh, I loved that. I love that he played uh, House of the Rising Sun because, as you know, that's the first song that he learned on guitar. Mm -hmm. So, like, as a musician, like, seeing that, like, that meant really a lot to me to hear him sing that live. Yeah. I liked the fact that he opened up with We Got It Going On. Oh, I love that song. Yeah, that was a surprise. I wasn't expecting them to open up with that. And so I remember when they started to play that, that beginning, and then that was cool. Yes. I, and I, I vote that they should do that like during the band's tour. I think that'd be a cool opener. I agree. I like Raise Your Hands also, but mm -hmm. I think I like We Got It Going On a little bit more. Yeah, Raise Your Hands is, I've seen that as an opener that, opener though so many times like me too. This, this next tour i really hope it's like we get like a little bit of a different set list every night and uh i hope so too like a, like a different show opener every night and so because i love that you know um what's your favorite show opener um i actually like when they open up with blood on blood yeah yeah i like blood on blood a lot i my favorite the one that I, my favorite opening song that I've ever seen live was when they opened up with Just Older. I get, I, I don't think I've seen them open with Just, I don't think I've ever seen Just Older live, actually. Yeah, they don't play, I don't think they've played it since 2011, but that was, uh, the 2011 tour was when I saw them open up with it. They opened it up with it in uh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh show. One song I wish they played a little bit more. They played it a lot on the Circle Tour, and then it really went away. Is Superman Tonight? Oh, I know. I like it. I I like it better when he does it acoustic. Remember during yeah. the Circle Tour when he came out on the, the Circle stage and then he did it acoustic? Yes. I love that. I wish they would do that more. That's a song that seems like it's been forgotten about. You know, you don't even hear like talk about it. I think it's a great song. Uh, and one thing I really liked about Last Tour, and I hope they keep doing it, is uh, another cool story, actually, too, is um, my dad bought me tickets to Madison Square Garden, uh, the This House Is Not For Sale tour, and for my birthday, 
And the day of the show, I wanted to upgrade the seats because they weren't great seats. And uh, so me and my dad went to the ticket booth and they're like, oh, they're like, uh, they're like, you, you can upgrade to these seats. And I was like, I don't know. These aren't the greatest seats either. They were in section B. And, and he was like, trust me, you're going to want these seats. So I'm like, all right. So uh, I'm so all of a sudden, amen starts playing. And John starts walking up the stairs next to my section. And then Bed of Roses starts playing and he comes into my aisle and he stops right in front of me. I'm actually holding him while he's singing Bed of Roses. And he turns around and he hugs me and then walks away. Is it, and it, it's so nice that he does that for fans. You know, he comes out yeah. in the middle of the, middle of the crowd and, and does. I think he's done that every tour, hasn't he? I think I at, least, at least since Have a Nice Day. I think Have a Nice Day tours when they, they first started doing it. Like, like this you said, is the early. first tour I remember them doing it. Yeah, uh, Have a Nice Day tour it was the first time I saw John in the middle of the crowd. They opened up with it like that. Uh, Lost Highway tour that he started like in the middle of the show they did like Memory and Blood on Blood um, Circle tour they did the Circle stage Greatest Hits tour they did the yeah so I think every tour they have um, but I like how he went into like the sections that were like not like in the floor or in the front mm-hmm. and kind of went to the seats that were a little bit people paid a little bit less for oh, and yeah. like he still paid attention to those fans too Exactly. That's you know really what? I, important. Oh yeah, it is. It, it it shows how much he cares about other fans. You know, not the top dollar fans that are up in the in the front. Exactly. Um, and then you know what else I miss though? Uh, the sides. Remember the side seats? Yes. On the on the stage, they they were considered like fan club seats because uh, Mrs. B, she'd pick fans. I think you could also buy them. I I can't remember. But um, you can sit on each side of the stage for three songs, and I miss that. I think it stopped in the Lost Highway tour, and uh, I think after a few fans ruined it for others, and that was the end of... Were you ever a part of that? No, I never did. I was still a kid, uh, and I never... Me too. (laughs) Yeah, so I never got to experience... I mean, I went to the tours, but I never got to be on stage. I wish they'd bring that back, you know. Maybe, yeah. yeah but so, I, I think too many fans were jumping out of the, the side pits, and you know, like that girl in um, Punch Town. I think it was that was it Punch Town um, in Ireland. Yeah, that was in the documentary. Yeah, yeah, that's in the documentary too, uh, and that was a lot. Of, I think she had a part of uh, why they don't do it anymore because other fans did it too. You know, she wasn't the only one. People seem to forget that he's just a human being. Exactly. You know, you even see him in the documentary. You know, he's not really hugging her back. He's repeatedly saying, get off of me. You know, that's really inappropriate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, the thing is, yeah, he's a he's a rock star and, you know, people idolize him and all that. Yeah. But you got to remember, he's a human being, like you said, and. He's a, he's a normal guy like anyone else. He's a married man with children also, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. It, like, imagine but, how his wife feels seeing that. Yeah. Some well, people just don't, used to it, but. Some people just don't have boundaries. I, I don't know if I ever told you this story, but I remember I almost got to meet John in Pittsburgh when he was uh, campaigning uh, Hillary Clinton uh, back in 2016. And I remember um, going around the building and we saw Bill Clinton come out and we we're like, oh, that's cool. I, I didn't care because I was never a, you know, never a Bill Clinton kind of guy. Um, but I was like, maybe John will come out this door. And there was only like maybe five other, bon jo- you could tell they were Bon Jovi fans. And uh, security came out. It wasn't Matt, but it was like other security for John. And they said that John agreed to come out and sign some autographs, take some photos, as long as we were all calm and we all lined up. And he always said one photo, one autograph each. So I was like the fourth person in line. There ended up being like 10 people. He came out. He took pictures and autographs with the first two or three people. 
uh, first two people, and then the girl in the back just like flipped out, and she ran at him. And uh, security, gra- she didn't even get to touch John. Security, and this guy was like big. He grabbed her, and then another security guy got John, put him in a van, and off they went. But so that's the perfect example of boundaries and ruining ruining experiences for others. You know, because we all could have had that opportunity to get something signed or a photo, and she ruined it. Were you ever at any of the chili cook-offs? No, I never get I, every year. I'm always on call that weekend because of work, and I'm never able to go. So hopefully this year, I'm able to go. I know you have, and you've met them there. How how's well, that? How's doing that? So the first year, it was I had never met John, and it was actually like after my surgeries and stuff like that. I know I didn't get too much into that. But, uh, you know, I had some medical problems as a teenager and as a kid and stuff. Um, All I wanted after all that was to meet John. And uh, my godmother, you know, I wrote John a letter. And my godmother, like, even put a post on social media, you know, like, so that people could share to try to get me to meet John. And uh, nothing was working. Because John's a really hard guy to get a hold of for obvious reasons. Yeah. And, uh... (laughs) So uh, the first year of the chili cook-off, my godmother and my mom were like, oh, let's go, you know, like maybe he'll show up because it's for the firefighters. And I was like, all right. And uh, so, you know, the, so um, I see Dorothea there and, you know, I got to meet her and I actually gave her the letter that I wrote for John. Yeah, she's and, really nice. Yes, yeah, she is a very nice person. And... Um, Apparently, my godmother pulled her aside when I was done meeting Dorothea and said, uh, you know, what are the chances of your husband showing up? And Dorothea said to my godmother, don't leave until after three, which is basically saying that, you know, like, don't leave. So at the, so uh, Lou comes around, you know, Lou from the Soul Kitchen mm-hmm. comes yeah. around to me and my godmother especially. And he's like, last call. Like, to kind of let us know that John's coming soon. And uh, I went to go get chili because I was like, oh, last call for food. So I went to go get chili. And my godmother grabs me and she starts running with me to the door. And I was like, where are we going? What's happening? And she was like, ah, he was like, he's not coming. She was like, we got to go. Something's go- something happened with my kid. She was like, we got to go. And she stops me at the door and she was like, wait, who's down the driveway? She was like, who is that? And I almost fainted. <laughs> it was him. And I started screaming. It, it was him. Yes, it was him. And uh, my godmother was like, was like, you know, you need to calm down. But uh, she was like, I talked to him and you're going to meet him. Apparently, my godmother went over to him, like, you know, and explained the situation. And John took like a few minutes out of his time to sit with me and to stand with me and talk to me, which was really special. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I'm glad you got that experience. Yeah. Yeah. And then... uh, Go ahead. And then the second year, you know, he was there for like two hours just walking around, hanging out with everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I saw he... Sorry. No, that's okay. Then by the third year, everybody found out that he goes... And it was just, he couldn't even come out. People were like hanging on the door. He was, it was at the Tom's River location. People were hanging on the windows and on the doors. And yeah, it was yeah. madness. Those kind of events, you know, yeah, I think a lot of fans know that he'll show up to those now. But like, even if he does, you know, like even myself or you, you know, yeah, I'd, I'd go. But you, you want to do it in a respectful manner. You know, you want to be calm, enjoy the event. And then, you know, John will come out and make the efforts to sign stuff. And, you know, I'm sure you can contest to it. And I, I know some other friends have. Um, he comes out, autographs, takes pictures. And, you know, I think those are the kind of the best experiences. Well, so. this chili cook-off, they had, re- they, they had done it really smartly because... Because now they know that, like, fans show up and they show mm-hmm. up, that, like, you know, in the expectation of meeting John. 
Yeah. So they had like a corral like around the parking lot. And like John was able to go separately without any fans bugging him to go oh. and meet the firemen separately and then he came around the 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 fence to meet the fans. Well that's good. That's yeah. yeah. But um so I'm going to end the the recording. You and I can talk for a few more minutes if you want. Okay. And uh, thank you for coming on. Of course.